Mm, sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. I'm, uh, I'm going to mute myself.
Hello, John. I'm here. Eh, no sound. No sound. Yes, I cannot hear anything. Uh, is that Fitri? Hi, hi. Is that Fitri? Hello, John. Can you hear us? Yeah, how's the ice cream in China? Uh, it's wonderful. We are excited. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Traveling, traveling. Yeah. Hey, 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 Ben. How you doing? Oh, hi. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, let me get off my. Uh, hey. I'm on my. Uh, on two screens here, I'm getting confused. No. There we go. Can I try my Yeah. My introduction.
espèce.
Good morning, Joanna. Hi, John. How are you Hi, doing? everybody. Welcome. I'm okay. How are you? Good. Uh, we're waiting for Dr. Spetzer to come. <laughs> A minor detail. Ah. Okay. <laughs> you do you have do you have, do you have the contact of Spetzer? Why am I hearing that? Okay. Oh, I know that's that's that's. There's what. an echo coming yeah, now. That's, yeah, that's coming from my computer. Yep. Yeah, and there we go. Even even the hostess isn't here. <laughs> Warlick, where is she? Hi, John. Hey, good day. How are you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Welcome. Uh, thank you. Looking forward to listen to this lecture from the stalwarts. Great. The master is going to come. Great. Great. Yes, yes. Nice. G great. Another stalwart coming. All fine? Yes. Well, good, we're good. waiting for one of the stalwarts to show up. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Is uh, Professor Jua there? Uh, we're waiting for, uh, let's see, Sue's here. Uh, mm. let's see, Patty Pacheco is here. How are you, John? Hey, how you doing? Hey, Manuel, how you doing? All good. All good. You're in Russia? Still here. Is it pretty warm there? Yes, it's very hot. Very hot. <laughs> very hot. Very, very sunny, right? Yes, yes, yes. You can see the sunny day. Uh, <laughs> the sun and the birds. <laughs> No snow, right? No, 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 no. Oh, people uh, using shorts. <laughs> like Miami Beach. This is like Miami Beach. Like, like, Florida, Dominic like Dominican. Uh, almost, yes, almost. Almost like Dominican. Very hot. Uh, okay. Uh, you... Shoot me for a second. For... Okay. Okay. Hello, hello, Yuha. Hello, John. Can you hear yeah. me? Yeah. I, I, is Dr. Spetzer, uh, have you heard from him at all? No. No. Okay. I said I got an email and uh, I contacted uh, his secretary and everything should be okay. It is 6 o'clock soon in Arizona, 6 o'clock a.m. Oh, that's right. That's right. He yeah. said he will join. Oh. Uh, let's wait. Let's wait. We have okay. been in contact. And let Okay. <clears throat> now it is soon, soon. Yeah, I saw it's the email. The clock here in China. I saw the email. It confirmed it to you. And I sent also back. And I have been in contact with his secretary. Yeah. Uh, 
mutta tosta ne Mrini on Albanian ne. So we have been in contact in many, many times in the recent days. Okay. Does he social media I have social media? Does he use Facebook or that's really easy to get a hold of someone that way? Yeah. I don't have it. Um, people supposed to know that uh, in Tempe. He's in Miami. Oh. And uh, specialized in Arizona. Oh, yeah. Hello, Dr. Duca. Hello, Victor. How are you doing? Hello. Hello. Bye. Everything okay? Yeah, everything okay. okay. Good. We are waiting for the great star to join yes. us as you <laughs> both also Shubin, all of you <laughs> thank you thank you you have been heavily involved in webinars now i have not in anatomy webinars so this is good yeah 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 um victor wants to do 24 hours a day Nah, but you, you are also doing 25. <laughs> <laughs> 20, 24 hours a day, like like MTV, uh, mm. neurosurgery, neural anatomy. Mm. <laughs> Getting a little worried that you are. Yeah, of course, now I'm worried what happened with... Spetsler. Hello, Professor Juha. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm That's fine. Manuel from Russia. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Russia has now increased in COVID. Heavy blood work. Yes, unfortunately, uh, yesterday twenty thousand cases. Twenty one. Yeah, that's record, record, record now. Can you travel there inside the country or no. lockdown also in the cities? Uh, you, there is a lot of restriction to, to move inside in the country, to move inside in the country. No, it looks bad. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Dr. Bennett. Good morning. To I, am I, Eduardo Gosti. I am Eduardo Gosti from the University of Brixia. I am in quarantine for COVID. Oh, so welcome. Welcome. I can see this. Where, what country are you from? Brixia, near oh. Milan, Italy. Oh, okay. Okay, welcome. I am a resident of Professor Fontanella. Mm. Um, Molto piacere. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. Hello. Hello, Professor Hua. 
Hello, hello, hello. Nice to meet you. How is your quarantine? Every quarantine? Oh, it's. Uh, I'm studying. <laughs> I have a little bit of fever, and uh, but it's well. Thank you. Do you get food one time a day, or like in China, I was six weeks in quarantine, so I get once a day in the morning sack of food, and that's all, and then they seal the door. Is that so? There? Uh, they seal the door. They were sealing the door. They put the seal so you wouldn't go out. Ah, uh, yes. I am closing my room. Now he is thinking. Oh, Warlux is here, finally. <laughs> the co-host shows up late. Is that you, is that you Warlux? Yes, hi. <laughs> oh, my God. oh my God, oh, you're in surgery, I didn't realize that. Yeah, we got a case today. Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. Do you want do you want to host or no? You can't. Uh, yeah, today I really want to host, but uh, as I have to be on the case, so I cannot host today, but I'm going to watch that and I'm going oh, okay. to appreciate okay. it. Okay, you say hi to Sue. Sue's here okay. from, from Myanmar. Hello, yeah. Sue. Yeah, hello. <laughs> Hi, Say hi to Hi. Say hi to Marla. Yeah. Hi. 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 Well, both you guys are on the so channel. We're yeah. the same. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Susan Myanmar. Juha here? I'm here. Hi. Oh, so Spencer sent a message that in one hour. Yes. <laughs> Difficulties with the time difference or calculating the time difference. He's thinking yeah. it's nine o'clock. So, but now it is eight o'clock in China. So, this was the. Mm -hmm. I asked him to join as soon as possible. Oh, oh, okay, okay. We'll just say e email is my only possibility. But he answered already. So, oh, he's, here he is. Here he is. I suppose he's, he's, he's awake. Here. He's, he's here. I suppose he's awake because he answered his email. Okay. <laughs> he's here now. He's here. Okay, wonderful. Okay, he's a great man. Yes. Are you there, Warlux? No. Yes, I'm here, Don. Okay. You you wanna you wanna introduce uh, Dr. Uh, Yuva? I uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. we go ahead when Professor Spetzler is here, so I inter yes inter yes okay. we'll, 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 make we'll make it real we'll make it real quick. Dr. Spetzler, are you, are you there? He came in. All right, Dr. Spetzer, are you there? Uh, let him in, should be here. Just hang on. I did let him enter through the panel. <clears throat> so, uh, Professor Yuha, you already get the response from uh, Spetzer? Yeah, he thought okay. it is in one hour, so I said it is now. I think he's, yes, yes. Because he actually, last time when, uh, when he's answering email. Okay, okay. So actually, he, last time uh, when uh, Michael Lawton was uh, invited to have the presentation, he also miscalculated. Them. Yeah, it's, it's easy. It's yes. easy to okay, do. okay, okay. It is difficult also to count. Hour late. Time difference. Okay. Very difficult. Very difficult. I make all the time errors. Yeah, but he was here. I see. I let him in. I let him in, Robert Spencer. I don't know where he went.
Oh, here is a right. Here's Robert. Okay, wonderful. He's a great man. Okay, I think he's. <laughs> Are you there, Warlocks? Okay, I'll just go. We'll just go right ahead as soon as Dr. Spencer gets set up. Are you there, Dr. Spencer? He was in. It must be. maybe it's a connection. He may have a Wi-Fi. See the video about look. Well, to be honest, yeah. No, no, no. I will not want to show later. In another. Okay. okay. Because you can join now. Now, now you join. should hear me, right? Well, there he is. Okay. 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 We can hear you. How are you doing, Dr. Spetsa? I'm sorry to wake you up so early. <laughs> no, it's all right. But on my calendar, it was an hour later. Oh, okay. I make mistakes like that all the time. Uh, well, I counted no, up. Uh, is your camera working, Dr. Spetsa? Uh, my camera should be working. Do you not see me? Not yet. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, here we go. Here we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Uh -huh. Perfect. Ready to go on that 23 mile trek in the yeah. Grand Canyon? <laughs> uh, this, okay. is, this is like it is. Okay. We'll just start right away. 10, okay. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good morning. It's Dr. John Bennett from Miami Beach, home of Neurosurgical TV. We have the pleasure of having Robert Spetzer, a uh, noted neurosurgeon, and I'll let Yuha introduce him. Good morning, Yuha. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Professor Spetzler. So I take my uh, short in introduction, of course. This man, can you say yeah. Can you see that? No? Yeah, I can see you. But uh, like the this one. Yeah. Oh, okay. Big, big. This one, yeah. Okay. Okay. Welcome, everybody. So I think now we have extremely good possibility to see Dr. Spetzle to present about his career, life in neurosurgery. This is how to become a good neurosurgeon. I saw no one, anyone who wanted to be a bad neurosurgeon, but to be a good neurosurgeon, to be excellent neurosurgeon, you have to have good hints and take a careful look on the, what's following now. So two words, these are train hard. Robert Spetzler has trained hard also in sports. He, He's famous of that. He wanted always to be number one in every sports, uh, but also in neurosurgery, as you know very well. So to become an excellent neurosurgeon, you have to find heroes, mentors, and friends. And I think uh, uh, for me, Professor Spesser has been always far away hero, far away mentor, far away a friend. This is what you need in neurosurgery because you cannot do neurosurgery alone. So you have to have some picture of the world and support in the world to make it well. So this is the, uh, 2009. Professor Spetzler came to Helsinki to be opponent in Dr. Martin Lehetzka's PhD on pericolous artery aneurysms huge material with more than 500 patients. And I, in the morning before the dissertation, I showed him one pericolous artery analysis surgery. 
uh, he was, uh, we made it very fast because we are very experienced, but he was a little bit confused because he's operating the, these patients in a lateral position, I mean, to find. So he couldn't understand the anatomy exactly. And Dr. Mati Lehetska made him an extra PhD, PhD book where all the pictures were turned 90 degrees. But we did very well together. He was very busy, could stay only two days by us because at all the world to travel. So, but he had also time to make a foreword for our Helsinki book, which has been translated in many languages. So he always could find time to support neurosurgeons all over the world. And this is one of his specialty to support, friendly support. So neurosurgery has three parts, operative skills. There's no doubt that the Professor Spetzla is the highest level of that, but he could also manage research, clinical and basics. And then of course, teaching. He has been taught huge number of residents, fellows. So an army of successors around the world. And is one of the those selected to be one of the most important neurosurgeons during the 100 years. Here you see him. He has published a lot. I looked at PubMed. Now he has more than 900 publications and with all the book chapters and so certainly by far more 100. So he has shared his knowledge and many people are following him. He has trained the best young people and many of them maybe are not becoming better, but try to try very hard to become, become his level. So thank you very much. This is a short introduction. If somebody in neurosurgery don't know the name of Robert Spessler, then he's actually not involved in neurosurgery. So please go ahead. Stop. Uh, thank you, Juha. Um, Start sharing screen this one. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. <coughs> Coming up. Okay. Uh, do you see the full screen? Yes. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Slide through. Here we go. This should do it. Do you see me? Yes, it's perfect. Oh, yes. Perfect. Um, well, thank you, Yuha, for the kind introduction. Um, I did get the schedule screwed up somehow because I thought it was in one hour. Um, but here I am. Uh, the same occasion that Yuha mentioned, we've had a long friendship. I've admired his uh, skill. I've admired his uh, courage. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. I'll take care of that. Okay. Yeah. But you can still hear me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, on the occasion that uh, you have already mentioned, um, our friendship deepened. And as I said, I greatly admire his uh, fortitude, his incredible surgical skill, and his tenacity to never give up. I want to show you... Um, my travels uh, through the world of neurosurgery. And, and in many ways, I'm embarrassed because it's a talk uh, that is really about me, which makes me very uncomfortable. Uh, I wanna start off with my uh, first visit to China and then uh, really go through family. Why did I go into medicine, career, role models, last surgery, and can I still contribute? But my first visit to China was back in 1981. That was a long time ago. And China was just beginning to come out of uh, the Western isolation. And here I am, a young neurosurgeon, uh, presenting. You can see the screen was really a piece of linen. Um, uh, we observed uh, surgery, uh, very well done at that stage, observed uh, 
surgery without anesthesia, uh, limited number of instruments. Uh, my uh, beautiful wife, who was a neuro-oncology nurse, uh, went with us and visited the hospitals, made many friends. <clears throat> and uh, this is Dr. Tu, who organized the meeting. And, and uh, this is uh, me back in 81 and some other academic colleagues. I was impressed by <clears throat> the amount of research going on. Uh, here was one example. And uh, the acupuncture that they really used as an anesthetic for one patient during surgery, uh, very impressive. But it wasn't all work. We got a chance to see China. We got a chance to see uh, the Great Wall. An incredible virtuous, hardworking people that used anything at their ability to move the economy along. This was back when, when uh, bicycles were everywhere. Uh, cars were far in between. Uh, and yet there were smiles on people no matter what. Uh, so, this is an Arizona scorpion. I'm not sure why this um, um, happened, but there down here was a plate of food. When I visited uh, Dr. Zhao uh, in 2001, where I ate for the first time scorpions. And then this is a scorpion that I uh, got during a, a uh, horseback ride just last week in Arizona, many times bigger. And then I came back in 2018 and naturally China had uh, blossomed into this incredibly progressive uh, industrial state with massive buildings everywhere. And at the same time had the ability uh, to visit and uh, see these incredible treasures uh, from the past. So I have a lot of very uh, fond feelings uh, for your big uh, country with its diverse people, uh, diverse cultures, and I wish you well. And getting back to my story, uh, I was born in Germany in a little uh, farming house <clears throat> uh, with my parents uh, being presented here. And my parents had six children. Uh, I was uh, the third and my first encounter with medicine was a, a rather dramatic one. Uh, when I was six years old, I had a little cut on my uh, foot and I became sick. And at night and during the day, I would have these spasms. And finally, uh, the doctor noticed that my reflexes were wrong and uh, said, you need to go to a specialist the next day. Well, that night <clears throat> I was in a room right next to my parents' uh, bedroom, which was unusual because they were so worried. And I had one of those spasmodic attacks and broke my mother's favorite vase. And uh, they came rushing into the room. I expected uh, a punishment for breaking this vase and instead I got a hug. And in the middle of the night we drove uh, to Erlangen, which is near Nuremberg, which is the university hospital. And uh, I have some vivid recollections. One is where they held me down and they cauterized that little sore on my toe. And then because my disease was so far along, they decided I wouldn't survive the night. And so they put me in a storage room full of the iron lung machines. And I remember my mom's face plastered against the little oval window. And she was pleading with the doctors, I was told later, to let me go home with them. If I was gonna die, she wanted me to die uh, at home in her arms. Well, they gave me a new medicine called uh, penicillin. And obviously I survived. And I became sort of a, a star in the hospital where I spent a number of months. And I remember very distinctly being taken on a gurney to an auditorium. And the auditorium to my 
six-year-old eyes was full of white coats, endless white coats. And I was placed on a little tiny table uh, up front. And uh, the professor who had actually saved my life <clears throat> took my robe off to show the reflexes. And I was incredibly embarrassed, just incredibly embarrassed. And uh, I hope that somehow this helped me be a little bit more empathetic uh, with my patients. Moving forward, 53 years later, I was giving a lecture in Erlangen, Germany, where Rudi Falbusch was the chairman. Uh, that's Rudi Falbusch who made lots of contributions about the intraoperative MRI scan and pituitary tumors. And I think maybe only in Germany at that time, he presented me with my hospital records when I was, uh, when I was there as a little child. Uh, very, very, very nice. <clears throat> but back to my journey. I knew I wanted to be a neurosurgeon when I was very young. When I was in high school, um, in the yearbook, that we published every year, what was my goal? It was a ready to become a neurosurgeon. And so I had the advantage of really focusing in on this goal right from the very beginning. When I went to college, um, I did an honors project at a uh, nearby laboratory where I worked on flow meters in a canine model. I went to Northwestern, which was in Chicago, because Paul Busey was there. Paul Busey at that time was the most prominent neurosurgeon uh, in the country. He ran the Journal of Neurosurgery, and he became really my first professional mentor. He is the one, as a medical student, that sent me to Kreienbuehl and Yassergill, which were, was a life-changing events in my career. Here is Kreinbuehl explaining this uh, stereotactic advice, and here's Professor Yasegel right behind him. I've always thought my residents should treat me that way as well. Um, Paul Busey established a neurosurgery internship, uh, which I took, and then he said, I'm going to be retiring soon, so I want you not to stay at Northwestern, but arranged for me to go to San Francisco with Dr. Wilson. Dr. Wilson then was a relatively young neurosurgeon and chairman, and it was a great opportunity for me. When uh, I found out that I was accepted in San Francisco, I was absolutely elated, and I enjoyed every day of my uh, residency. What did I learn from uh, Wilson? Well, he had incredible dedication. He had complete commitment to neurosurgery. He had incredible drive and he was very generous with his residents. He beat my, my wife, Nancy, uh, was his neuro-oncology nurse. And while I was a resident, uh, I developed a percutaneous shunt. I convinced uh, Dr. Wilson to let me go to uh, Austria, where I met uh, one of my dear friends, Professor Kuz. And during my residency, we published uh, our first book together, which at that time was uh, called Clinical Micro uh, Surgery. And during residency, uh, I also developed the normal perfusion pressure breakthrough theory when I observed in a patient that Dr. Wilson had taken out an AVM beautifully, patient was doing well, and then a few hours later uh, deteriorated and had a huge hemorrhagic uh, infarction. I think what is pertinent uh, to this here is that travel and learning from others is an important part of career development. So I met Dr. Schmiedek uh, when I was at, went as, as a resident uh, with my wife to Europe, and we did a lot of research together. 
I met uh, Wolfgang Kuss, who uh, published, uh, who I published with the, the whole series of Atlas, I'll show you later. And I spent time with Ghazi Yazirgil. Uh, that, at that point in time, he uh, uh, had become a chairman and uh, he demonstrated to me an, an ability of surgery that I always aspired to attain. Part of life is uh, sharing it with others and uh, finding the right partner in life, I always say is a lot of serendipity. Um, and uh, <clears throat> I couldn't have been happier um, to have found uh, my wife, Nancy. We got married up in the mountains in the snow and <clears throat> Along with my wife, I've had the fortune of having terrific friends and colleagues. We had a travel club meeting, I mean, a travel club and ski meetings. And uh, some of these names you might recognize, Roberta Heroes, Duke Sampson, Art Day, Nick Hopkins, uh, all very prominent neurosurgeons. And we would meet every year with our families or without our families, exchange scientific uh, information uh, and share the successes and the travails of going through uh, our neurosurgical careers. But we also had a lot of fun. One of my dear friends is Ben Stein, who was also a mentor for me. Um, and uh, he was a skiing partner and we had skiing meetings in Europe or heli skiing uh, every uh, year. In 1983, I was recruited to the BNI by John Green. Uh, he was a great member, a great gentleman. And uh, the BNI at that time was in dire straits um, as he was retiring and we couldn't find the right replacement. And along with me came um, a neurosurgeon that was working in my laboratory, Joe Zabramski, a very dear friend. And I became Harbor Chairman of Neurosurgery. This is Mr. Harbor who left behind a uh, million dollars to establish the chair. John Green was director still for three years. And what were my goals? I wanted one coherent group. What did that mean? It meant that the neurosurgeons that were going to be part of the BNI uh, had to accept a vision. And what was that vision? It was subspecialization. That meant that everybody had to pick an area of subspecialty and be at the cutting edge. I wanted to create the best residency program possible, and I put all my energy those first few years into it. I wanted to create academic productivity because that's how you get recognized by your peers. I established at great expense an editorial office to help with publications and videos, et cetera. Uh, a research laboratory. I had a large NIH grant, and uh, this gave an opportunity to the residents um, to experience research uh, directly. And I found in Phoenix a gentleman named uh, Volker Sontag. He was a resident with Ben Stein, uh, the one I mentioned before who I went skiing with. And he's the one that alerted me to Dr. Sontag being in Phoenix. And uh, so I looked him up and this is Ben Stein again. When I asked Ben Stein whether I should go to Phoenix, he said, great opportunity, go for it. By the way, Volker Sontag is in Phoenix. When I asked my chairman, Dr. Wilson, whether I should go to Phoenix, he says, if you go to Phoenix, you will wither in the desert. It's like dying in the desert. Well, he became our first visiting professor. And then he said, may you and the BNI prosper. And in fact, when Charlie Wilson needed surgery, where did he go? He came to the BNI. So there are mentors. Yuha mentioned the importance of mentors. And here are my three that I try to emulate. 
Charlie Wilson, because of his incredibly dedicated, focused uh, work ethic. Yasser Gill, because of his surgical virtuosity. Charlie Drake, because he had such a generous personality. He was approachable. If you were a medical student, you had no trouble getting and talking to Charlie Drake. I believed in hard work, but I also believed that if you worked hard, you had to play hard as well. These are two of my early residents in my office at my fish tank. We had daily teaching rounds every day. This was uh, early on when we still had the x-rays that had to be hung. I established the editorial office. I established the BNI quarterly. And we made presentations and publications. And we included activities like a hike from hell. This is going down a uh, narrow canyon, beautiful, beautiful canyon in Sedona, a very difficult hike um, without a trail, going down a stream, you had a swim, which was very cold, make it through to the other side. We, we established the Grand Canyon hike every year. I have crossed the Grand Canyon 34 times. It is a very arduous hike and it all built camaraderie. It all built, uh, we are together in this. Um, and many visitors from around the world uh, would come. Here's uh, uh, the president of SICE. We established Olympics so that once a year we had com competition uh, that included everything. Uh, and uh, here's a pogo stick, jumping contest, swimming events, biking, volleyball. We had visiting professor dinners and I always included uh, the spouses and we had parties where we always included the kids. I wanted to build a camaraderie that helped everybody go through this journey of residency that was so much uh, hard work. In uh, 89, I took a sabbatical and I went uh, to Vienna for a good portion and also visited Vinko Dolink. And uh, we put together uh, the biggest uh, portion of the color atlas of micro uh, neurosurgery. We had many visitors, uh, Charlie Drake, Wilson, Yasser Gill, Janetta, one of my dear friends, uh, and even the Pope visited one hospital in the United States and it was ours. I believed in sharing knowledge, which was through publications, and here's one of our more recent ones. Uh, I believed in getting the best of photography, art, we had a medical artist, computer animation, anything to really be able to share appropriately. We human beings are very, very visual and you wanna be sure uh, that you allow people to share in what you are trying to teach them. Well, how successful were we in academic productivity? Well, here's an article uh, that was uh, came out of Mount Sinai in New York. And you can see that in fact, uh, the BNI is really right up on top. Uh, this is something that I just received uh, last week from Doug Concioka. Uh, and uh, what they did is a Microsoft uh, analysis of 700 billion entry. And you can see this outline here, I won't bore you with it. But in fact is we did quite well uh, authors, highest ranked neurosurgical authors came from the BNI, uh, way out there. We established a PhD program in neuroscience with the university and uh, it turned out uh, um, a great opportunity for our residents or neuro or postgraduate people that wanted to um, focus in on neuroscience research. This is some of our research staff 
Uh, we uh, spend a great deal of uh, money and raised a great deal of money uh, to have a active uh, research community. We developed with the help of uh, Mr. Eller a Met Presence Room. So this is me operating. And here's the audience sitting down in this room. They are here. They see the screen, what is going on in the operating room, and then they see the actual surgery on the screen below. So they really have everything as if they were in the operating room without having to be there. And that's the room we then used for daily rounds, uh, uh, which was one of my most pleasurable activities during the day, is exchanging knowledge, giving knowledge and learning from the residents, fellows, and the many, many visitors from around the world. We are not in isolation. We can't do it without the help of many, many others. And here are our nurses. And I've, I've, I've always had a great relationship with our nurses and uh, was rewarded by being their honored guest at their meeting uh, back in 2006. The resident, this is uh, one of our early residents, Dr. Hadley. He commented on why I was successful. And he said, never put off till tomorrow what you can have a resident do today. So, uh, and there's a lot of truth because uh, my uh, success is not my success. It is really the success of many, many individuals uh, who all pulled in the same direction. Um, outside of my office is this wall of uh, individuals um, that I had the privilege to train and uh, it is my greatest source of uh, professional uh, pride. So the question comes as uh, I came to the, toward the end of my career, is can I still contribute? And I wanna share with you um, something that I've been working on for quite a while. So this is, um, and he allowed me to use his name. This is Dan Barrow, who's the chairman at Emory, superb neurosurgeon, dear friend, Robert, please take a look at the attached images and let me know how you would approach this. And he attached the following PowerPoint. Uh, patient with multiple hemorrhages has all these symptoms, which are very obvious based on this cavernous malformation that had bled. And you can see it's a relatively fresh hemorrhage. You see the location close to the tentorium, approaching the tentorium, up in the midbrain and pons. So what would you, what do I recommend? I said, I would use an extreme lateral superior cerebellar infratentorial approach, the most difficult portion of the lesion, uh, da, da, da. Um, but it is important to visualize to avoid leaving a remnant behind. So he sent me this post-surgery, beautiful job taking it out, completely gone. And remember, this is what I told him, good luck. And he said, thanks for your wisdom. I operated on the young man uh, with the large midbrain and pontine cap mal. As you predicted, the inferior portion was the most challenging, but all went well. He dramatically better already and making a great recovery. <clears throat> I attached the post-op CT and MRI. A week never passes that I don't ask myself, what would Robert do? It, and not a week passes now that I don't get at least a couple of requests of how would I approach this lesion or what would I do, etc. In this animation, we will provide the various exposures to you. So when we look at, for example, the lateral approach, there are so many subtleties as to what we want to achieve. How far anterior do we want to go? What do we want to resect? How much bone to take? And so on. And all these really depend very much on where is the lesion? How much do we take off? Well, if we want to get to this space, we don't have to take off very much. If we want to get farther up, 
we have to take off more, and so on down the line. So the subtlety of these lessons really is important. So I came up with what I called an interactive surgical atlas. And basically, this is what it's about. I plan many different routes into the brain, depending on where the lesion is. Um, this is a short uh, presentation of a concept for a virtual atlas. A patient's MRI scan is reviewed and a lesion identified, which is then merged with a fandom, which has unlimited number of lesions. The lesion that closest response for the patient and the fandom is selected and appropriate approaches are demonstrated. The best approach is then selected for uh, stated reasons. And if one wants to use the robotic function of the microscope, it can align with the trajectory that has been chosen. So the bottom line is that it recommends an approach specific for the lesion uh, that the patient has. The menu includes alternate approach. It, it, it improves advantages, disadvantages, patient position, alternate position, advantages, disadvantages. Are there any specific pearls? Then there is a block feedback in the cloud where the user can agree uh, he would maybe may suggest an alternative approach, suggestions, comments, criticisms. So here's a case example. We see a, a lesion here. It was merged with a phantom atlas. It suggested a supracerebellar infratentorial approach. It went through the advantages, minimal brain transgression, direct route, minimal risk of deficit, et cetera, disadvantages, cerebellar veins, deep exposure, alternate approach, retrosigmoid, easy exposure, but difficult to reach the superior portion of the lesion. So what is the position for lateral? Um, the goal is really to separate the shoulder from the neck. Uh, then you go through, this is the, the position that I would use, supine lateral. Um, there's the prone concord, uh, Dr. Ma Michael Lawton, who's the current chairman at the BNI would use the sitting position. Everybody has their own nuances. So you can include in, in, in the MRI scan, the anatomy and tractography as we go through it. Uh, then pertinent anatomy, which is right there. You don't have to go to a textbook uh, for this approach. It's all there. You see where you wanna make your incision in the medial lemniscus. Uh, then there will always be a uh, example. This is down in the ambient cistern, fourth cranial nerve. Image guidance gets us right to the lesion. We make a little opening, no retractors in place. Uh, I, I, I almost never used retractors in my last uh, 10 years of practice. And then taking the lesion out. So everything is right at your fingertips, specific for that uh, patient. Uh, so here is uh, one more example. In this case, patient with multiple cavernous malformation, teaching the goal that you wanna go through the middle of the cavernous malformation, not here, because you would have great trouble getting to this point. Um, and then when you're done, you know where you are. So here you watch, this is what the, This is what the uh, atlas will show you. And then you can follow to see where you're going through. The little red dot is your exposure, getting you to the lesion. And all of this is right at your fingertips uh, being shown to you uh, live. Same thing here with the various angles. The more we can visualize, the better off we are. Let's and review the surgical anatomy of the then we, we, we go through the anatomy. The, these, are, these are actually uh, little, little videos that pertain specifically uh, to the approach that has been recommended. So that's the retrosigmoid approach. 
in a patient. And then again, with multiple cavernous malformation. We we uh, show a surgical uh, example of the approach and surgical example of the lesion and how we walk up the brain stem from the fifth nerve so that our trajectory is right to the middle of the cavernous malformation. No retractor in place, retrosigmoid approach, no rigid retraction, and that allows us to get right to the lesion and very small uh, pituitary-like instruments uh, to take it out. What are the advantages? It's progressive cumulative mentorship. We learn from each other and we share with each other. The ability to allow the surgeon to access what master surgeons from around the world think. Ability to send feedback, collaboration, utilizing and imaging. So I wanna finish up with the rest of my journey and my final days in the profession I love. Um, the AANS put together the first um, um, satellite symposium um, and uh, it was an incredibly uh, touching symposium because so many of my colleagues came from around the world and there's Yuha uh, and uh, Vinko Dolink uh, looking a little bit older and uh, Dr. Sontag and Michael Lawton who has taken my place and doing a superb job and they rewarded me with the highest double A and S honor, the Cushing Medal, uh, a, a, a deeply touching affair. More to home was uh, when, when we had a final uh, dinner and a whole series of events uh, when I finished. Uh, we have a roast, which is very, 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 um, um, difficult if you don't have broad shoulders. And there's my wife uh, laughing when somebody's making fun of me. Uh, my fellows uh, that, that established the Spetzler Society uh, presented me with a, a plaque, uh, which uh, uh, I prize and is hanging in the BNI uh, up on the wall. And uh, the bottom line was, uh, we honor you by continuing your legacy of pushing boundaries and not accepting the status quo in neurosurgery and in life. Ad astra per aspera, which means through hardships to the stars. And then came the night uh, with a thousand guests of colleagues. These are uh, the uh, female residents um, and attendings uh, who have uh, trained with us. Uh, it was an incredible special evening and then a complete surprise at the end when this is the president of the system and the president of our hospital presented me with the name on the BNI tower. Uh, very impressive. So my last operation was <coughs> Middle cerebral artery aneurysm, uh, almost 6,500 aneurysm. Took a selfie on that. I, 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 I think maybe they're all clapping because they're, they're rid of me. I don't, they're not gonna see me anymore. But it was, it was very touching. And then, <clears throat> and then my residents insisted we take the elevator. We normally always take the stairs. So uh, we did, we took the elevator down and this is what happened. Walk out of the elevator. And a very awkward moment. Because what are you, <coughs> what are you gonna do? I thought, well, that's it. I turn the corner to be <coughs> free, and it just keeps going. These are uh, nurses, staff, residents, patients, colleagues.
Um, I had tears in my eyes as I walked down and it just, <laughs> just wouldn't stop. So I want to I want to leave with what what words really have meaning uh, in this career? Serendipity, being lucky, being fortunate to be somewhere at the right time, passion, outside interest, family, commitment, research, travel, opening, ethics, easy rule for me. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Colleagues and friend, mentors and mentoring and contributing. So we are truly privileged to be in the greatest specialty. Honor it and give it everything you have. Finally, this is where we make a difference. This is an 18 month old with a dissecting aneurysm. How do we treat it? No retractor, we find the lesion that's A2. We take off the dissecting aneurysm. I take the frontal polar artery from the contralateral side and patch the opening, providing also a bypass. And so this is, this is what we did, easier to see. And then patching it. And this little girl did just fine. Smartest girl in the class and is the best reader. So off I go with uh, incredible gratitude for the serendipity that was my fortune. Mentoring is a reciprocal process where giving and receiving are the ultimate award, reward. Thank you. Don't forget to dream. They may come true. It is the journey, not the destination. Thank you very much. Excellent, Robert. Uh, Ruha, Yuha, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, Yuha. Okay, okay. Uh, Bob, so it I was uh, extremely wonderful. So you had many people when you went out after your last operation. All the world is with you, and we follow your your great legacy, and we will change the world like you did. Thank you very much, Robert. Thank you, you have. Okay, Dr. Spessler, would you like to hear from the audience? Would, I, is, would someone like to interact with Dr. Spessler? Someone for a diverse audience? Yes. Go ahead. I'm Dr. Harshad Parekh from Mumbai, India. Welcome. Thank you. I really am really touched by the journey of Dr. Press Fedler. He has shown us and inspired us how to become a good neurosurgeon and a good human. Excellent work. Very touching story. And you are the amazing star of a neurosurgery which we can never, never retire from this planet. Best of luck to us and to you. You have taught us one more lesson, how to be good to the patients and to yourself. Thank you very much, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, more comments? Uh, open floor. I have a question for Professor Special. Go ahead, Manuel. Please introduce uh, yourself, Manuel. Yes, first, uh, nice to meet you, Professor Special. It's a great honor. Uh, my name is Manuel. I am from Dominican Republic. Now I am a resident neurosurgery in, in Moscow. Uh, my question is for you is if you can define yourself in, with one word, which one will be that? <laughs> Lucky. <laughs> uh, I, I think serendipity really, uh, really is uh, 
a a major. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We got. I got that. Okay. I'm sorry about that. No problem, uh, Manuel. I I don't think there's a single word. I think it's personality, um, um, being being able to listen and being able to speak. Uh, I was just very very fortunate. Um, and and as I try to. Uh, impress is although I get a lot of the credit this is really a journey that was only made possible by so many people that bought into the vision thank you so much very kind words thank you so much sir uh, you have been such a big inspiration for all of us so uh, when I was able to uh, go by to apply for fellowship it was very unfortunate that you were all at Rodad but I remember that I sent you an email and uh, you sent me a lot of wishes and that really mattered to me because uh, you know uh, you are like such a big inspiration for us when we start our residency here in Pakistan we always this, you know we learn your classification system for EBM, that's the whole thing that we apply. Thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing your very, very nice words uh, with us today. And it's uh, really something that really matters to us being young neurosurgeons. And we are all looking forward to hear from you. So thanks a lot for all your contributions and for all the wonderful words you shared with us today. Okay, Nor, you're a resident from Pakistan, correct? Yeah. Okay, Thank welcome. You. Good luck to you. Thank you so well, much, sir. Okay. Okay. More comments or questions for Dr. Spetzler? Uh, Professor Spetzler, I'm being yes. sure. <laughs> I'm translating for you. So uh, yeah. I have a good news for you. Uh, now almost uh, 4,000 audience in Chinese uh, WeChat channel are hearing your presentation. Thank you. Great. <laughs> yeah, and thank you for the translation. <laughs> Uh, your, your English is just absolutely superb. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, he's done a lot of translations for us uh, to reach yes. the Chinese uh, neurosurgery community. So more comments uh, from the audience? Now is your chance. Hello, uh, good evening. Uh, I'm Rafael, I'm a resident from Brazil. Uh, okay. When I was in uh, Dr. Spasser came over for a lecture and i never seen uh, any bypass surgeries and he was showing all these bypass surgeries and I was very amazed. I was asking him, Dr. Spasser, how, how do you come up with this? And his answer was, well, there's a problem and we got to solve it. So sometimes you have to be creative. So this is really something that always comes back to mind when I face difficult decisions, difficult choices, difficult situations. And it's, it was really a pearl that I got from you. So thank you for that and for inspiring everyone else. Thank you thank very you. much. Thank, thank you. More comments? Any comment for Professor Spetzler is going to be less and less. <laughs> the words are less, his work speaks. The volume of work and volume of teaching which he has, no one can match it. Thank you very much once again, Professor. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Special, I have a question. The Surgical Atlas, it's available now for use? Uh, it, is, it is still in, in uh, development. OK, we'll keep in close touch. We'd like to hear about that. Okay. When it comes Fantastic. Out. Fantastic. Okay, Dr. Spetzer, I think we'll wrap it up. Thanks. Uh, sorry to wake you up earlier than you expected, <laughs> but thanks for your dedication to show up and do it. So, All right. You have a great day, and thank you, everyone. Okay. Thanks, everybody. And thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, thank ben, you. For, thanks ben, for translating to the Chinese neurosurgeons, and we'll see you next week. So. <laughs> <laughs> goes on, well, but he can still uh, contribute, like you were saying, with a surgical atlas. That seems like yeah. a really interesting thing. And when it comes out, hopefully we'll get him back online to interact with people so they can learn how to use it. Uh, looks like a good tool. Yeah, because it's not just looking at approaches. It's looking at the approach that for a lesion that you operated or that you're going to operate or that you don't want to operate. <laughs> 
so it's 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 very it's very more it's very more fo- it's much more focused on a specific lesion and not just uh, you know a an approach. No, it's yeah. more. I think it's more. It's it's, it's going to be a uh, an enhance an enhancement for 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 us as as a new learning tool for you see for us to use. I think it's going to be great. Planning surgery, you think it'll be a, an aid? Even just for learning, I think, but also for sure for planning. But even yeah. just for learning, looking at the specific lesion that you actually saw the patient and you, you know, you have you have everything in one place. You have your own patient, you have the approach, you have the video, you have everything in one place. Very sounds very interesting. Yeah. And we'll be hearing of it. So you're welcome. Come to any webcast you want. You're on the mailing list, right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So do you get too many emails? Uh, do I overwhelm you? No. Actually, I'm very grateful that we got emails 24 hours and then one hour before and then right away because yeah. it's easy to forget these. Yeah, emails. I know what the life is and like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just as, as Dr. Spess said, oh, I thought it was one hour later and we have you know different time zones. Yeah. So it's always a little bit confusing. So I was very happy that I got three different emails, so I could I could be here just because of yeah. that last email. So yeah, I'm I'm glad it's not it's not too much. <laughs> That's good. I, I figure what it's better to overwhelm because the people that want to hear it, they don't mind. They don't mind. But the yeah. people that don't, okay, just unsubscribe. That's all. Yeah, just just block it. But if for us that's that want to be here, it's great. So yeah, and it's not you know it's not like it was 15 emails. It was three very nicely tiny emails so i don't feel overwhelmed at all i think good. it was great it's good to hear that okay welcome it's good to meet you pleased to meet you hello patty patty you there you still there patty pacheco i don't know if you may have stepped away and sue sue you still there more to comment and uh, thank you so much professor hey how you doing where's your day <laughs> pretty uh, good very yeah. ins- very inspiring right yeah <laughs> wow <laughs> what, what a career yeah we are usually motivated by him <laughs> it's good to see you good to see you yeah good to see you too okay yes. see you bye-bye <laughs> thank you so much okay, see you later thank you. bye-bye Okay, if anybody wants to interact, we'll develop this time. Like it's kind of like hanging around after a conference. Uh, I know when I was uh, uh, in medicine, actually, uh, most of the people, I, most jobs I got were at conferences. You kind of hang out and talk to people. So I'm just going to leave the room open. If Warlocks was here, she could play the piano. You know, Sue, she plays the piano. You know that, right? <laughs> yes. You've seen, you've, seen, you've seen her play the piano, right? Yeah. <laughs> she is really good. Oh, man. She, everything. Oh, man. She's good at everything she touches. Yeah. Yeah. It makes me sick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> me too. <laughs> was, but, uh, yeah, she couldn't show up today. She She's like you. She's... On call yep. in the OR, so I guess she must have been busy. So, hey, Victor, how you doing? Okay, I say, oi. Victor, you're muted. Unmute yourself there. You're muted, Victor. Oh, okay, it really was a nice experience to see Dr. Robert Spetzler. He's wow. a he has a neurosurgery genius, as uh, oh. Dr. Yuka, oh. as uh, Dr. Shubin. Wow, amazing, huh? Amazing, yes. What, really a, amazing. what a career! He's very inspiring. Yeah, of and, course. And to see when he left, you know, when I when I retired. I had the janitor open the door. When he retired, he had people lined up. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, amazing. Oh man, oh man. What he touched a lot of people. Man, yeah. man, that's a lot of people, man. 
Wow. Uh, it's going to be interesting, his surgical atlas that he's developing. You see that? What are you showing us? That surgical atlas that he's developing with uh, Dr. Uh, Lawton? That'll be interesting. Did you, did you see that part, Victor? Yes, of course. Yeah, okay. From a neuroanatomical viewpoint, that'll be good, good teaching, it looks like. <laughs> So, let's see, uh, when is your next talk, a neuroanatomy talk? Uh, no, I think IPE is my, oh, I was going to ask you, uh, IPE is doing a conference this weekend. Are you speaking at his conference? Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow yeah. morning here okay. in Mexico. Yeah, I'm, go I'm, going to talk, I'm going to talk about the forensic fissures in, uh, in traumatic brain damage. Okay. Okay, that, yeah, that's the theme of the conference. So, so he uh, he's supposed to speak Monday. Neuro, I don't know if he can. Can you speak Monday if I can't? On uh, let me let me let me see what the topic is. Hold on. Next Monday, uh, the lecture is with uh, Dr. Ip Sherian, and yeah. the other Monday, I'm going to talk. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, so good. We see you tomorrow. Yeah. You. You, you got a lot of people lined up. Oh, yeah, I should advertise that. Uh, let's see. Hey, Joanna, you still here? Later. Okay. Let me try to find the schedule for them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. I'll have to announce it to all the people. Hello, Doctor Dr. Harshad. How are you? From India. How are you? Fine. And you? I am also fine. Uh, good to see you. Waiting for your next lecture. Oh, thank you so much. So, no, no. I learned a lot from your lectures also. A lot of thank good things you are showing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Rewriting the whole neuroanatomy. Relearning. Is, is really nice. No, no, nice. And it was very inspiring to hear Robert Spesler today. Yeah, he, he amazing, is, amazing. I'm not a neurosurgeon, but he's, he's a very inspiring guy. He's a god of neurosurgery. He's a god. Yeah, of he, he deserves it. He deserves, he's a god. Yeah, here's a, here's a conference we have tomorrow, uh, Harshad, where Victor's going to be speaking there. Okay. Well, let me show you. Uh, Victor, we'll see where you are <coughs> See, got to, uh, okay, here's the uh, okay, day one for what tomorrow, Victor? See, what time do you know what time? Oh, forensic at 7 45, right, Victor? You see it, okay, right. There, Victor. Forensic features and traumatic brain damage. Fine, fine, fine. Good, interesting topic. Yeah. Thanks, thanks, thanks. See you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Bye. Yeah, it's, it's a big conference, Victor, tomorrow that I'm just putting together. Yes, I think it's, it's going to be the first Congress for Ip Sherian in the new institute. Yeah, yeah. Well, actually, he's not doing... He'll be there, but most everyone else will be everywhere else, like like you are. Uh, but yeah, I hope it's a good one. Uh, uh, he threw it together very quickly, within like two weeks, I think. 
And I guess they're going to do some dissection. I don't know if we're going to televise it. We'll see. Because you're going to have to have special lighting, right, for dissection or, or like a camera, like an overhead camera, Victor, for a dissection. What do you think is needed there? Uh, for the dissection? Yeah. What do we need to do the dissection? Or what, yeah, what, what kind of equipment, uh, like for filming, for filming? Um, a good camera only, not microscope, a good o camera. Over overhead camera or just one to camera, the side? Camera. camera just no a regular microscope. camera? Yeah, it's okay. enough. Okay. Uh, Patty, you there? I want to try to get a hold of you. John Bennett. Yeah. Are we going to have another lecture? No. No, no, that's it. That's it. Okay. See you tomorrow, John. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Victor. Great. Thanks for showing up. That, that was it was good, huh, Victor? Thank you. Bye bye. Bye everybody.